Athena is a lovely but nasty little thing. Here is some of the chemistry behind it. Over on the left hand side we have phenol and you have to make sure that your OH group is attached to the benzene ring because it is not attached to the benzene ring then it's not going to be a phenol. Here over in the right hand side this is the, um, the main part so it is methanol which has a phenol uh, group on it. Now the reason benzene is so reactive is because of this ring of delocalized electrons in here. And what happens is all of these p orbitals up here, because they're all kind of like close together, because they're all orientated together, what happens is they all kind of like merge together to form a nice big set of delocalized top and bottom delocalized electrons. So you've got kind of like massive donuts um, sitting above and below the um, benzene ring where the carbons are and this is just a massive delocalized space of electrons which is what makes benzene so reactive. Now when we're talking about phenol what we have are the six p orbitals from carbon and then a p orbital from oxygen as well and this gets involved with the delocalization so we can see that our ring of delocalization for phenol top and bottom is actually much larger than it is for benzene which means phenol is going to be more reactive than benzene So as the delocalization increase, we're going to get an increase in nucleophilic properties. This makes it more reactive. So whereas benzene can't induce a dipole in um, a non-polar molecule, phenol can. So phenol can undergo direct halogenation. It doesn't need a carrier like benzene does. Phenol is very weakly acidic. When it is reactive with water, this hydrogen here um, is going to go off, it's going to dissociate, and because the electron involved in bonding um, is already part of this massive delocalized system, what's going to happen is we are going to get an increase in the delocalization because the electron involved in bonding to hydrogen well, doesn't need to bond to hydrogen more because the hydrogen has gone off to do something else. So this is actually a very stable acid. But it is a very weak acid. If we're looking at the reaction in water it's a reversible reaction, as the majority of things are. And if you want to put it in um, um, a range of weak acids, it comes in between water and carboxylic acid. You 
you may be surprised to see um, water on here, but anything that has um, a hydrogen ion attached to it, some of those hydrogen ions are going to associate at some point. So when you have um, water, um, every so often one of the water molecules, um, the hydrogen and the hydroxide, is going to dissociate. So water is a very, very, very weak acid. So we don't, you don't need to be too concerned about it. Don't worry about it. That's basically what I'm trying to say. When we react phenol with sodium hydroxide, like lots of other things, we are going to get the hydrogen and the hydro, um, hydroxide ion reacting together. So we are going to get water. The sodium ion is then going to be attracted to the negative of the... Um, of the oxygen that's left over after the hydrogen's gone off to form um, water. And what we are going to get is sodium phenoxide and water. If you want to test phenol, we can use iron 3 chloride and we are going to get a lovely purple complex out of the end.